Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Tammy. And we're, we're inseparable. And today uh, we were supposed to talk about sensory issues, start, start that series up, but I lied. Okay, we're going to do something I call um, Autistic Without. And uh, I know you're familiar with the name that we chose, which is the condition formerly known as Asperger's. And we, we said that because Asperger's is no longer recognized. And that's because it has a Nazi tie to the name. And I thought, well, just come up with a new name for it. So when I did a lot of research, I found out that what Asperger's is, is autism without intellectual or verbal difficulties. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so my wife, that's, that describes her. She is not intellectually disabled or challenged in any way. She's probably, if anything, above average intelligence. And she's not verbally challenged, uh, not to verbally delayed. Instead of that, she was singing at nine months old. So, you know, um, but other than that, fully autistic. And we were saying, wait a second. I thought that's what autism was, being verbally or intellectually delayed or having those difficulties. Well, that's what most people know, most people think. And it's some, even some doctors who will um, see a patient and say, you don't have autism because you're not showing any of those outward signs. For one, they, um, and then two, if they do recognize Asperger's, they recognize it more in males than females because females mask. So you want to talk about that for a sec? Yeah. Um... Well, there was one female who was, uh, gave, gave the um, example of going to the doctor. She was recently diagnosed with autism as an adult, and she was having frequent headaches, so they sp sent her to a specialist. And when she went to the specialist, she just gave him that information, just saying, well, uh, I was recently diagnosed on the autism spectrum, just in case that might be helpful. And he looked at her and said, you're not autistic. And she was just saying how invalidating that was, you know, after going through the testing and being diagnosed to have another doctor who's, you know, that's not his place to tell her that she's not autistic. But unfortunately, this is what happens is people have this narrow minded, stereotypical, you know, what autism is and realizing it's on a spectrum. And there is such a thing as having it without having, you know, those major, yeah. um, you know, disabilities. Visible um, issues. Because and... I, I have more of the social and um, sensory issues as more of what holds me back. Well, you know, and, and your doctor said that to you too. I mean, it showed up on the DNA test. You said, I want to go uh, get tested for this. Of course, we didn't know how difficult it would be. Mm -hmm. But the doctor, oh, honey, you don't have, you don't have autism, you know. You know what, what are you talking about? How do you know that? Oh, no, you just have social anxiety. And, and no, I mean, we've dug into it since then. And every box ticks off. There's a lot of very specific things that apply to an Aspie girl. And it's, the, that's the key thing is that it's different in females and males and it's not as well known that it's different in females and probably because of the emotions that females have more emotions and hormones or whatever than males. But I think that, um, you know, it's just one of those things that there's got, there's got to be more like research and education about, you know, how it's different in females and males instead of just telling people or making them feel like, you know, invalidated by saying, nope, you don't have this. Right. I think that's all that anybody with us is looking for. We're just looking for somebody to acknowledge and say, yes, you know, you, you do have these issues. We, we don't expect you to fix them. We've learned how to manage them. Mm -hmm. Most people learn how to manage them. Sometimes you learn how to manage them before you find out what it even is. But anyways, thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. We love you. <laughs> Bye.